The smell was horrible. And uh, the best way, I guess, to put this is the smell of death. Hi, guys. Welcome to another episode of my podcast that's fine with me. And I've chosen an interesting and juicy topic today. I'm going to be talking about ghosts and mystical things around us. So I really want to know your opinion. Do you think that ghosts are real or it's just your own fantasy and we are kind of like too sensitive? So let's get started with talking about um, me personally, my family, my experience that my mom actually used to have and I personally did as well. Well, years ago when I wasn't even born, my biological dad, I have a biological dad obviously and um, I have a dad who literally raised me because my mom, she got into divorce when I was almost four and um, I, I actually, I, I don't speak to my biological dad and I have no connection to this person and um, let me tell you that my mom told me it was probably 29, maybe 30, 32 years ago, I don't remember the, the exact date. dates. Um, but I do know that my great-grandma, she was left alone when her uh, son, my grandma's brother, died. And uh, my mom and my biological dad, they took turns with my uncle and my aunt, who were actually staying with my great-grandma every night. So one day, or like maybe one week, my mom stayed in her apartment. And another week, or maybe day, I don't know the details, they stayed in this apartment, in my great-grandma's apartment. And um, as I recall, my mom told me that my biological dad, he had never met the brother of my grandma. And uh, that was the main reason why, uh, in the middle of the night, when they were sleeping, he told my mom, that when they woke up in the morning, he told that he was almost sort of pinned to the bed and he couldn't move, he couldn't scream, he couldn't talk. And he literally felt like someone was staring at him and was, he was studying this person, my biological dad. And my mom said, yeah, sure, uh-huh. Um, and then the, my uncle with his girlfriend, my aunt, came over. They were talking and discussing different things. And then my sort of dad told that he actually had this experience and uh, that was crazy when my aunt told that she was new to the family as well as my biological dad so my grandma's brother he had never seen them before that was the first time they were seen together in this apartment when he already died and um, he was studying my aunt the same way she said exactly the same story that she couldn't move she couldn't speak she couldn't ask for help she was like pinned in some sort of state where she couldn't do anything. And that moment, my mom said that it wasn't really funny anymore because uh, when the second person told the same story, they were like, whoa. Um, then my mom told me that during the same time she was uh, getting ready to get to work and she was with a great grandma staying and uh, great grandma told her that she was cooking some breakfast and my mom, she got carried away with her makeup and when she came to the kitchen she found out that the gas was off and her ex they didn't burn because someone turned this off though it was half cooked and my mom said that was weird but she kind of knew by, by by that time that it, that was probably real and um a couple of years ago my who is that my my uncle's mother died she passed away and she was quite a person very uh, tough person. It was really hard to find, mm, you know, keys to her heart, let's say it this way. And when she died, they were preparing everything to the funeral and basically for the service after the funeral. And uh, my mom, she was helping out to, um, oh, it's really difficult with all those relatives. What are the names? What are the names? So she was helping to one woman. She is a mother of my aunt's um, husband sort of like that. And they were discussing the uh, the character of the person, that she was a tough person and this and that. And um, mom told me during that time while they were discussing her, three or four times, the, uh, the cook, the sort of plate, or basically the cook turned off out of nowhere. And uh, then my cousin, he was staying in the in the room next to the kitchen and he said that he was sitting alone and just doing absolutely nothing and out of the blue out of nowhere turn on the radio just like full volume and it started you know playing some records or some music and that moment my mom 
I'm sorry. The moment my mom realized that it was pretty much okay not to talk about this woman in her own house. And they stopped talking and discussing her as like what kind of person she was and all of this. Uh, so they stopped and all these things stopped as well. When my grandpa died, he actually, it was 2016, right in the beginning, right in the beginning of March, he died. And uh, I remember sitting in my room with my mom talking about some casual things. And then we heard someone coughing. And this is the way my grandpa coughed all the time. That was the same sound. And, uh, and I stopped and my mom was like, did you hear that? I said, yeah, I, I did. And that was so weird. It wasn't sort of coincidence that my mom and I heard the same sound, the same coffin as my grandpa did during this nine days where the soul is transferring to another realm. If it's true, I'm not claiming it's true. I'm saying that as people say, this is probably the way the soul uh, transition in from one state to another and we heard a lot of coughing a lot of weird noises at the same time all of us like everyone who was in the room heard the sounds which was crazy because one thing when one person is hallucinating and another thing when everyone in the room are hallucinating i can tell you for sure my great grandma when she died she left a gown that she wanted to be buried in so for the funeral she had a small you know kind of like package where she prepared a gown, some slippers, and some other things. I have no idea what she prepared. And my grandma, she was packing all of that to prepare for the funeral, but she thought that the gown that was in this package was too big and it was too long. That was the main reason why she actually purchased a new one and she gave a new one a shorter option, the same size as my great-grandma's height. And my, um, my grandma said that Oh, I don't know. I don't remember. I don't really want to lie because I don't remember the exact timing and the exact minutes, let's say days or whatever. She got a phone call. My grandma got a phone call from her friend or someone that she talked to out of nowhere, out of the blue. And she said something that no one could know. No one. She said that she had a dream about my great grandma. She was complaining that her gown wasn't her gown and she needed the one that she put in this baggage in this package let's say my 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 grandma she was in a, in a shock because that is weird no one no one knew about that probably like my mom and the woman that called she wasn't even attending funerals that was some sort it wasn't even a friend of family it was some sort of like probably like ex like former colleague or someone that they weren't really good friends with so it just it was bizarre and crazy and of course, my, my grandma went to the church and she asked the priest what she should do. And he told her that she should grab this gown and just bury this near the grave. That was the, that was the main reason why my, my grandma did that and probably said some prayer. I don't know. But then my great-grandma, she stopped coming in dreams. Actually, my, my grandpa comes in my dreams a lot. And uh, in a couple of years, I had a lot of crazy dreams where my grandpa was literally like in blood we were fighting we were screaming i don't know why why he keeps coming in my dreams through all of my family is just often comes to see me right now it's more like he's sometimes sad or from time to time he like for example one of my dreams that i had a couple of days ago not days month ago um i i made some sandwiches for me that i, I needed to go to school though I finished my school years ago and my grandpa he grabbed my sandwich and he started eating that and it was like well that's my sandwich but then I said okay I'll eat it um I'm gonna I'm gonna make another one and I told this to my mom and my mom to like told this to my grandma and my grandma said oh probably he's hungry or something and she went to church and she actually did something I don't know what they do in church to to make sure that and I, I didn't see any more dreams with him but it might happen in a couple of months again so yeah my grandpa comes in my dreams a lot. I can tell you that in 2016, I had um, my grandpa, he lived with us. So he lived in the same apartment with me, my parents, my um, siblings, let's say we, we lived it all in one apartment. And um, right before he died, one or me, like one day before he died, I, I can't even describe the smell. The smell was horrible. And uh, the best way, I guess, to put this is the smell of death. I I can't compare the smell to anything else, anything else. Like, probably, um, it's not some sort of garbage. It's not like rot. 
you know, mm, no, it's not nothing compared to. I cannot compare this to anything in my life because this is the smell that um, was growing, I guess. Right before I went to bed, we the smell came out of nowhere, and I actually had to tuck my my door so the smell wouldn't come into my room. And uh, the next morning, I had to go to my university, and I left the apartment. And when I came back, there was no smell. And I talked to my mom later on. She said that the smell um, had become stronger and stronger right before he died. And uh, when he died, immediately the smell was off. I still have no idea how it works. I know that when we called a doctor two, three days before, because we thought that he had some pain, and we called the doctor because, like we said, he's not drinking, he's not eating, he's not doing anything, and he's not even going to a toilet. Um, my my grandma said that the doctor told her he was his body was transitioning and was getting ready to die. And uh, apparently there is some sort of thing when a person sort of, when the body of a person knows when it's about to die, it's actually preparing itself right before the death. We didn't know that. Of course we didn't know that. Um, when it's not a sudden death or it's just some sort of transition, it's um, when um, the person st stops peeing and, no, he does this right before, like two, three days before he dies or she dies, like someone like the person died dies so he stop he goes to a toilet a lot and then he stops because all of this fluids all of it just is off and uh, he did have some pain so they prescribed some medicine and then um my my grandma she called the priest we called the priest he came over to talk about i don't know like sins some sort of ritual i don't know and then in a day he died that was a surreal moment i remember 2016 right in the beginning of march i had um, a couple of periods, my Chinese, and um, I was coming home, everything was great, the sun was great, I mean, like, the weather was perfectly good, that was a perfectly good weather, the weirdest thing that two, three days before that, it was literally snowing, it was snowing, it was really hard to get to my university, I got into huge traffic, and I talked to my teacher she kind of scolded me for that and I literally started crying because all of that that I saw at home with my friends and I asked one of my group mates like we had some sort of task some sort of homework and I didn't see that honestly I had so much in my mind during that period of time that I didn't see that and this group mate said like oh you should check out your phone why should I tell you and I literally started crying and I asked to um leave the room and uh, out of nowhere I was like literally crying and in a couple of days he died um i came that was thursday i still remember thursday march 3rd march march 3rd and uh on the friday i went to classes i had only one class i didn't really want to go but i had to i attended this quickly i wore everything black and then it just went home straight forward and that was it so i um, I didn't attend classes for a couple of days later on. We buried, um, we went to the funeral, and that was it. That was it with a little bit of sounds and a little bit of things. And I can tell you, my mom, she used to have this situation where she talked to a guy. He went to the same um, restaurant where my mom worked, and he told, uh, no, he, not he, um, my mom told me that he died. Suddenly he died. He got into some car crash or accident. And um, the person who was involved and the person who was responsible for his death, he disappeared or she disappeared. No, who was that? And uh, my mom told that one day one of their waitresses came to the restaurant and she said she had a vivid dream about this guy. And he was describing in detail who was responsible, how he left. And this guy, he had a pregnant wife. She was probably six or seven months pregnant. And he needed a revenge. And he asked her to come to a police station and describe this person, describe all of that. But she said that this was insane. She had this vivid dream, but she couldn't do anything because she wasn't a witness. She wasn't there. And um, it's going to be ridiculous. No one is going to believe that she had a dream about a dead person who is seeing all these details. So she didn't go there. But it did happen. So a lot of, I guess, a lot of these things happen when um, we dream. Because I guess we have some sort of connection with a little bit different world during that time. Is there some such thing as curses? I don't know. Probably there are some certain things. Because my friend, she had a grandpa. So this grandpa left when he was 45 or maybe 40 
two, I guess, four to two or four to five. He left their family. So he went to, he said that he uh, didn't love her grandma anymore and he left. And uh, her grandma, she stopped talking to him for a long period of time and he left. And uh, in a year or so, maybe a little bit less or more, he reappeared and begged for forgiveness. And she forgave him and they started living together and he died around 50, so he was 50. As he told his wife, um, her grandma, he felt like he was sort of enchanted, bewitched. He was bewitched, I guess, as he said. And uh, in a couple of years, he died when he was 50. And the weirdest part about that is not that he was bewitched or he wasn't bewitched. I don't know. The weirdest part was right like two or three days before his death, there was a dog sitting in front of their house. And this dog was howling nonstop. This dog, they actually shoot her. They try to make sure that she would go away, disappear. Um, everyone tried to get rid of this dog because this dog was nonstop howling. It was just a nightmare for three or two days straight. It was sitting in front of their porch and howling nonstop. And in two or three days, he literally died and this dog went away. That is another thing that I know a lot of people say um, cats, dogs, a lot of animals, they can sense death and they can sort of predict it um and yeah it, it did really happen so um i'm not really sure my friend does not believe in charms she does not believe in bewitching she does not believe in all of this stuff i do i really do and a lot of people say that if um, a person was bewitched he is not gonna live longer than uh, five or eight years i don't know if it's true or not and then they say that the person who did that is probably not gonna be happy ever again um, I don't know, but I'm scared, you know, literally, I don't really want to get into this kind of thing because I feel scared even thinking about that because it's something that you don't really want to interfere into, you don't really want to get into. It's more like astrology is one thing, I love it. It's not something that I do personally and it's just like, you know, oh, Sagittarius, oh, Aries, oh, this and that. But when you're literally um, talking about some rituals and some things and spirituality and what whatsoever, it's scary, it's super scary in my opinion. So I guess this is pretty much it, guys. I don't really think we have a lot of things. I guess my mom, she told me so many different stories about this ghosts and, and other things. The only, I guess, interaction that I had, sort of had with, I guess, ghosts, that was my grandpa who was coughing and I could literally hear him coughing. Um, but I don't really think I had any more interactions. Thank God. I'm like super scared of that. So I guess this is pretty much it for today's podcast. That's fine with me, guys. If you have any stories to share, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. You can do this in the comment section or you can actually do this through my mail. Down in the description box, you can find this and tell me a story. It's going to be 100% anonymous and um, I'm just going to read and share this experience with others. So yeah, I love you all. I'm not going to be able to deliver a podcast next week because I'm going to be having some fun with my husband. He's having a vacation. So we're just gonna have some fun and a wig off. Love you all. And I'm going to see you next time. And yeah, hopefully guys, love you all. Bye-bye.